This is the transformer shifty wise test covering transformations on a quadratic function. The task looks like this and can be found in your workbook or your Canvas account. If you missed class today, you should pause this video and go work through the task yourself before coming back to watch this video. If you were in class today but didn't quite understand what the main math ideas were, then you are in the right place. Think back to Math 1 and Unit 3 when you learned about domain. In number 1, uh, we're looking at domain. It represents all of the x values in a function. It says we need to know the domain for this context. If we read that the context here, we found that the we're building a quilt that is a square where a of x equals x squared. That means on this quilt, we've got an x times an x, so that the area is x squared. It says that um, we want to think about the context of the area of the square. It doesn't make much sense to have a negative area or even an area of zero. So we know the lowest value of x will be zero, but that won't be included in the domain. So we're going to write that as zero with a parenthesis. On the other hand, the quilt could technically be any size you wanted, so there's no restriction on the highest value of the domain. Thus, the domain is zero to infinity, written with parentheses because neither value is included in the domain, but every value in between is. If you're used to doing inequality domains, you would write this as zero is less than x is less than infinity. Either one is a reasonable way to write the domain. In number two, we're thinking about how we might represent these situations with symbols. So let's look at this basic square, drawing the square, where the side lengths were x. And in the first statement, it says the length of each side is increased by five units. So we're adding five to each side. If we want the area of that, then we need to multiply the sides by each other, which would give us x plus 5 times x plus 5. Looking at our choices, the closest to that is this x plus 5 squared, because x plus 5 times itself is x plus 5 squared, and what we have here is x plus 5 times x plus 5, which makes sense. We're multiplying it by itself. Then if we look at the next situation, we see that the length of each side is now being multiplied by five units. So we are going to change this to be x times five and x times five. Thus, for our area, we are going to have five x times five x, and that is 25 x squared. Well, the thing that is closest to that is a equals 5x quantity squared. So we know that that one goes with our second, that c goes with our second choice. Then, if we are looking at the third choice, we see that the area of the square is increased by 5 units. So before we were looking at lengths of the square, and now we are looking at the area of the square. So our original area of the square was x squared, and that is being increased by five units, which means that we are adding five units to x squared, and you can find that easily here in D. And then that leaves us with A, but let's talk about Y. We are now going to be taking the area of the square and multiplying it by 5. So instead of adding 5 to this x squared, we are multiplying this x squared by 5. And so that is why that area is 5x squared. If you have any questions about that, please talk to your um, teacher. We're going to move on. So now I want you to take a moment in number three to make your own predictions about what is going to be similar and different between the original equation x squared and the new equations. Fill in these columns. Similarities might include this is the same uh, graph but it's been moved or um, the differences could be that the vertex is now in another location or that the graph is skinnier. So those are different ideas for your predictions and then we'll go look in technology in a moment. 
So in looking at number four, we're gonna go use technology. I'm gonna use Desmos, uh, which is an app and a website, D-E-S-M-O-S, -S, Desmos. Dot com. Hopefully before you've used this before, but if not, this is a good time to learn. So I'm going to go and graph our comparisons in Desmos. Oops, why is that doing that? Okay, so Desmos is um, going to be where we're going to test our predictions. So we're going to write our initial area, y equals x squared. We get this nice parabola, which hopefully you talked about in your unit three. And then we're going to write in our comparison, which Optima Prime says is x squared plus five is the first one she wants to work with. As we can see, the curve remains the same, but shifts up five on the y-axis. So now you are prepared to go answer that question and describe what you found. Then in number five, it tells you to go explore these different things. So you'll type in, instead of x squared plus five, you'll type in x squared plus two, then you'll type in x squared plus three and describe what you're finding. And then it asks you to look at, make a generalization. So um, one nice thing that you can do in Desmos is, oops, um, you can put this as a as that generalization, that k, and add a slider, and then this slider can change to be different numbers, and you can make your predictions based on what you're seeing. So I want you to take a moment and go make those predictions for x squared plus k. I'm going to move on to number six. So in number six, Optima is looking at um, what happens when you add or subtract before x gets squared. Or in our original descriptions, the x plus five quantity squared. So what we're going to do is go look in Desmos and compare that x plus five quantity squared. So I'm gonna keep my y equals x squared so I always have something to compare to. Then I'm gonna type in y equals parenthesis x plus five squared. And I'm going to see that the graph remains the same, but shifts left five. Now this might be interesting to you because that's a plus and this is a negative. And so you'll notice that inside those parentheses, we're moving in the opposite direction. So then the task asks you to, um, oops. The task asks you to play with some different ones. So I want you to come up with your own examples. And then you can also do what we did before and type in x plus h before we did x squared plus k, but in this case, we'll do the one that she has there and slide it around to get your examples that way. And then you wanna make a prediction or a description about what you're noticing. Looking at number seven, sorry, I don't know why it keeps doing this. Um, we are going to try multiplication. So it asks you to predict what you think will happen. So do that right now. And then we're gonna go test it. So again, we're going to keep our initial in here. And in a second line, type in our y equals negative x squared. And we'll see, and I want this to be a different color. So I'm gonna um, change the colors. And you see that it's a reflection over the y or the over the x-axis. So that's what's happening with our negative x squared here. Um, so you can write down that description and then we'll move on to number eight. So Optima is really liking that that was pretty easy. So she's gonna look at what happens when you multiply with numbers. So um, in our initial descriptions, that was our five x squared is multiplying with numbers. So if we keep our uh, initial comparison and put in our new, we see that it grows um, rather quickly, it gets skinnier. And in the question, it asks us to make some tables. So Desmos will do that for us. So if we click on this little um, flower type thing, it'll generate tables for us. I'm gonna let that technology do that for me. And you might notice that there are relationships between the initial or the original and the growth that is happening with these multipliers. You'll see that we're, as we go up, 
um, to our, or over one, we're gonna go up five when we multiply by five. So I want you to do this with a couple of different numbers and play with it. And remember that you can also um, do your y equals a x squared, add that slider and see what's happening when you change your numbers and get specific with your numbers. So to summarize, let's go back to our task. To summarize, when uh, we add or subtract a number to x squared, i.e. x squared plus k, then the graph will move up k or down negative k. If we add or subtract to x before it's been squared, then it's going to move left k or right k when there's a negative, oh, I'm sorry, h, when there's a negative h. When we, so that's the opposite of our expectation. It's opposite. When we multiply x squared by a negative, then we are going to reflect over the x-axis. And when we multiply by a number, we are going to move over one and up that number, up A. Or if it's negative, down A. Um, so that is instead of up over one and up one as the initial or original x squared would have us doing. So if you need more support on this, please go visit Canvas to find the Ready, Set, Go videos and the county website um, that is found at the top of Canvas to find unit overview sheets with links to practice problems and other video help. Thanks for tuning in.